for this session, we will talk about your donor stocks. And under your donor stocks, we said this is a form of your transfer taxes. But when we talk about this transfer, this transfer are gratuitous transfer because it does not involve a consideration. Unlike a transfer, which we consider as an onerous transfer, which can be subjected to either income tax, VAT, or percentage tax, plus excise taxes for the two items. While for your gratuitous transfer, we have either your transfer mortis cosa or transfer inter vivos. For mortis cosa, this is subject to SD tax, while inter vivos is subject to donor tax. So for donor stocks, just like what we have learned before in your ST tax, some or most of the rules that you have learned in your ST tax applies to your donor stocks, especially on your valuation and on your inclusions. So in your donor stocks, mainly our focus will be the following items. Again, we look into the items of your gross gift. If for your estate, we look into your gross estate, here, for donor stocks, we look into your gross gift. So for gross gift, we learn your inclusions. And after learning your inclusions, of course, we learn how to value those inclusions. Further, we learn what are the exclusions on your gross gift. When we talk about your exclusions, these are your exclusions provided again by your tax code or by your special law. Further, we have some deductions on gross gifts that we will talk about. After that, we have your net gift. So this net gift will be taxed. However, there will be an allowed deduction of 250,000 pesos, which is like a standard deduction. And then we multiply that to 6% to compute for your tax due. And after your tax due, just like your SC tax, we have your tax credit in case there is a foreign tax paid. And remember, whatever we have learned on your tax credit before it still applies here. Then we have your tax is still due. Therefore, our topic for today for donor stocks will revolve around these items. First, we talk about your valuation of your gross gift. Next, we talk about your inclusions on your gross gift. Next, we talk about your exclusions on your gross gift. And then lastly, we have your deductions from your gross gifts. So just like your SC tax, we will learn it this way. From valuation, inclusion, exclusions, until deductions. But before we start in your taxation of your donation, we learn first what is a donation. So donation is a gratuitous transfer of property or rights motivated by the liberality, liberality of the giver in favor of the receiver who accepts it. So if you still remember, if we have your estate, what we have there is your dissident and your heir. Now what we have here is your donor and your donee. So in your donation, remember, it is again a gratuitous transfer. However, this gratuitous transfer should be made during the lifetime of the donor. So in short, if ever the transfer or the gratuity was made during the lifetime, it is subject to donation or donor stocks. However, if that transfer is due to the death of a person, and there are properties transferred to the heirs that is subject to ST tax. So your donation under the civil code has the following requisites. First, you have your capacity of the donor. So when we talk about your capacity of the donor, we do not look as to the uh, whether the donor has the uh, money or the property or whatsoever. What we look into the capacity of the donor is the legal capacity. So is the donor capacitated already in the contract or not? So we can say that the donor is capacitated based on your obligations and contracts when, of course, that particular donor is already of sound mind, legal age, whatsoever. 
So when we talk about legal capacity, we talk about your capacity to enter into a contract. Next, we have your donative intent. So when we say donative intent, you have the intention to donate, which is known, of course, uh, by observing the forms required by law to make the donation valid. So generally, it must be in the form of a deed of donation. That is the form of your donative intent. And lastly, we have, uh, no, third, we have your delivery of the gift. So it may be actual or constructive delivery. If you still remember your different constructive delivery, your tradisho brevi manu, tradisho longa manu, constitutum possessarium, those items. The transfer of property is completed by delivery. So take note, the completion of the contract of donation is done by the transfer of the property. And when we talk about your transfer of property, that is your delivery. So your delivery, as I said a while back, can either be actual or your constructive delivery. One of the most uh, used constructive delivery is your tradisho symbolica. Next, we have your acceptance of the doni, the last requisite. The acceptance of the doni takes a look to your acknowledgement. No, without the acknowledgement of the doni regarding the donated item or donated property. So the doni need not be capacitated. What we need only is the capacity of the donor. So in the acceptance, so long as it is already received or acknowledged, it is enough that there is already an acceptance. We do not need the capacity of the doni. What we need is the capacity of the donor. Therefore, in your acceptance of the doni, as long as there is acknowledgement or there is a receipt of that particular property which is donated, that is already valid. We do not look into the capacity as to the acknowledgement or the receipt of that particular donated property. Further, the transfer of property as to your acceptance now perfects the donation. So the acceptance of the doni is perfected from the moment the donor knows the acceptance of the doni. So once there is already acknowledgement, the donation is perfected. Take note, the completion of the donation is done at the time of delivery, but the perfection of the donation is done at the acceptance. So delivery, this is the completion, while acceptance is your perfection. Sir, how about if I donated, but there is no acceptance by the doni? Is there a valid donation? No. Remember when we talk about requisites, all of the items must be present. There must be a capacity of the donor, there is a donative intent, there is a delivery of the gift, and there is an acceptance of the doni. If the three are present, but no acceptance, that cannot be. Okay? So acceptance perfects the whole donation. Now, we look into your donor stats. We said as long as there is a donation, that can be subjected to a donor stats. So what is a donor stats? Of course, donor stats is a tax on the donation inter vivos or the transfer gratuitously made during the lifetime of the donor. And what are the different natures of your donor stats? First, we have your privilege tax. Again, it is a tax on your privilege of transferring your property from one person to another. It is proportional tax because it is based on a fixed percentage, and that is 6%. It is an annual tax because we do not look at it per transaction, but we take a look as to your donation for the whole calendar year. It's an annual tax because we do not tax it per transaction, but we tax it for the whole calendar year. Although the payment of the tax is per transaction, but the computation of your tax is annually. In short, it is cumulative basis. So for example, we have here January. This is to be taxed. Payment is 30 days after January. If we have February donation, we get for your cumulative donation because it is an annual tax, we subject it to your donor stock. That's how your annual tax works, unlike for your transactional tax. Next, 
we have your ad valorem tax. When is it ad valorem tax? It is again based on a value of the donated property. It is a national tax because it is levied by the national government. And it is a revenue tax because it is for fiscal purposes or for your uh, budget or for the increase of the money of the national government. Now, since we're done with the introduction of what is a donation and what is donor stocks, we go now as to your donor stocks per se taxation. So how do we tax again your donor stocks or your donation? We tax your donation based on your gross gifts. And one thing that we need to look on your gross gift is what is the value? Because remember, donor stocks is ad valorem. So first, we need to learn what is the value of that particular property donated. So valuation of gross gifts. So what is the general rule on your valuation of your gross gifts? The value of the gift or donated property at the time the donation is made. If you still remember, this is likely to be the same with your estate tax. However, in your estate tax, it is at the time of the death of the dissident. Now, it is at the time of the donation is made. Now, the question is, when is the donation made? When is the donation made? Is it at the time you sign that particular contract? Or is it the time that all of the following requisites or the four requisites of donation is present? So what is important here as to your time of donation is made is at the time it is completed and perfected. Therefore, it is at the time there is a delivery of the gift and at the same time, there is an acknowledgement by the don. So... If ever the donation is revocable or conditional, there will be no donation to speak of. Sir, why is there no donation to speak of if ever the donation is considered revocable or conditional? So when we say it is revocable, it means that there is no donative intent yet by the particular donor to the donee. Because again, the donor might anytime revoke that particular donation. So there was no donative intent as a whole. While in your conditional type of your donation, it only transfers at the time the condition is met. Or it depends on the type of your condition, whether the condition is resolutory or suspensive. But generally, in a donation, what we have is a suspensive condition. So what is a suspensive condition again? It is a condition in which the happening of such creates the obligation. So, or creates the, or perfects now the donation because we are talking now about your donation. Therefore, when the donation is subject to a suspensive condition, the value of the gift is to be determined only at the time when the condition is fulfilled. Why? Because we said once it is suspensive, there is already a perfected donation once the suspensive condition is met. Therefore, when do you value a donation based on a suspensive condition? Once it is perfected. When is it perfected? Once the suspensive condition is met. Therefore, when we talk about your donation or the time the donation is made, you still look as to your completion and perfection. So when is the completion on your revocable? Once your donor makes it irrevocable. How about your conditional? Once the condition is met. Now we look into your specific rules. If you still remember, your ST tax has a general rule on your valuation and also has specific rules on your valuation. And as you can see, they are almost the same. For your personal, it is based on your current price or your fair market value. For your real, that is based on your assets value or your zonal value. Whichever is higher for your use of racks and your gratuities, they are based on your present value based on life. And what is the present value based on life again? That is your value based on the basic standard mortality rate 
or the present value of your cons consideration during the time of your donation until the particular gratuity or use of rock is ended. So for example, as we said before, if the use of rock is for four years or five years, then you present value it for five years or four years, whatever is the time. Okay? So we just need to get for the present value based on the life on your gross gift or your donation. Now, since we know how to value your gross gifts, just remember it is again fair market value. But what you need to learn here is the time the donation is made. So when is that particular time? So the time we said it is at the time the donation is completed or perfected, uh, completed and perfected. And if it's revocable once the donation is already considered irrevocable by the donor, and once it is conditional, if ever the condition is met. So we're done with one item that we need to discuss in your donor stocks. We're done with valuation. We go now to your inclusions. So what are your inclusions on your gross gifts? So the following are your inclusions on your gross gifts. So all property donated by the donor during the calendar year is considered an item of your gross gift except if that is considered excluded under the law. So what are the general rule or what is the general rule as to the items included on your gross gifts? So as you can see here in your table, we still look whether the property is considered real property or personal property. For residents and citizens, they are taxed again globally. While for your NRA, they are only taxed based on your Philippine gross gifts. But we again look whether the NIA, NRA is with reciprocity or without reciprocity. Because if with reciprocity, we do not include personal intangible property. But if that is without reciprocity, we include. So as you can see, this particular inclusions in your gross gifts is still the same with your estate. So the rule on your estate and your donors as to your general rule on inclusion is the same. So whatever you learned before is still applies. So just a recap, what are your personal intangible properties again? This talks about your financial assets and intangible assets. So for your financial assets, examples are your receivables, cash, uh, investments, Intangible assets, your franchise, your patents, trademarks. So those are intangible assets. Remember, if that is an NRA, you look whether the NRA is with reciprocity or without reciprocity. So other inclusions to your gross gift, we have this transfer for insufficient consideration. So what is provided under the law? Let's read. Where property except in sale of property or capital assets, which has been subject to final tax, is transferred for less than an adequate and full consideration in money, then the amount by which the fair market value of the property exceeded the value of the consideration shall be deemed a gift. Therefore, here, as long as there is a transfer of property, whether real or personal, we compare the fair market value at the time of your donation versus the consideration. And if ever the fair market value is greater, then we say it is a transfer for insufficient consideration. So if it's a transfer for insufficient consideration, your question is, what should be included in your gross gift? The amount included in your gross gift as said under this provision is the fair market value of the property exceeded the value of your consideration. In short, it is equal to your fair market value less consideration. But the question is, what particular property? So under this particular provision, it is said that except the sale of real property, which is subjected to final tax. So if ever that property is subjected to final tax, which is in the form of your CGT, such as your share of stocks directly to buyer, 
and sale of your real property, which is considered a capital asset. So real property or capital asset, which has been subjected to final tax. So we said we have only two items of CGT, share of stock and real property. What particular property here is considered to be the exemption under transfer for insufficient consideration? Only the sale of real property. Therefore, guys, if ever there is a particular transfer of real property with consideration, what you need to test is all other properties except a capital asset subject to TGT. So, for example, if that is a land that is considered a capital asset, then you will not subject it to transfer for insufficient consideration. So, for example, you have the following sales. The sale of an iPhone, the sale of a real property, which is considered a land, the sale of your office equipment. Okay. So, for example, the fair market value of your iPhone is 90, real property is 2 million, office equipment is 300,000, and the consideration is uh, 10,000, 800,000, and 100,000. Okay. So, if you will test this for transfers for insufficient consideration, what you will test is only those other properties which is not considered a real property subject to CGT. So what is the real property subject to CGT? We have here the real property, 2,800,000 consideration. So what we test is the iPhone and the office equipment. So iPhone, we have here, the difference is 80,000 subject to donor stocks. Office equipment difference of 200,000 subject to donor stocks. So if there is a transfer for insufficient consideration, do not test a real property considered as capital asset, other properties only. When can we see, if ever, that the transfer is for insufficient consideration? Only when the transfer has a fair market value greater than your consideration. How do we compute for the amount of your inclusion that is your fair market value less your consideration? Transfer for insufficient consideration during the lifetime of the donor. Next, we have also your inclusions for conjugal donation. The question is, when will you include that particular donation to the husband or to the wife or both to the husband and the wife? So first conjugal donation is between husband and wife and another conjugal donation is from husband and wife. When we say between husband and wife, either the husband donates to the wife or the wife donates to the husband. When we say from husband and wife, that is from husband and wife to other person. We first look into the rule of your conjugal donation between husband and wife. So if that is a donation between husband and wife, it is considered a void donation. So if that is a void donation, therefore, it should not be subject to donor stocks. However, if there is a moderate gift, then that can be considered as a valid donation. So what can be considered as moderate is still a question of fact, meaning it is dependent as to the husband and wife on what is a moderate gift. But generally, if there is conjugal donation between husband and wife and that is a moderate gift, you will not subject it to donor stocks because, again, we have here a 250,000 exemption. And if that is a moderate gift, I don't think it would exceed 250,000. So for between husband and wife, void donation. But if that is a valid donation, then that donation should be a donation of moderate gift. Next, conjugal donation from husband and wife. So again, when we say conjugal donation from husband and wife, that is husband, wife to other person. So if it is a common property, taxable one half to each donor spouse. If it is from exclusive property, it is taxable 100%. So for example, husband donated to A, exclusive property worth 1 million pesos. 
So this 1 million pesos is only on the account of your husband. Only on the account of husband. But if that is a conjugal property, husband donated to a, a conjugal property, 1 million, what is the rule? It must be taxable one half to each donor spouse. However, if only the husband signed, then it is taxable only on the account of the husband. So in short, it's still on the husband. But if husband donated to A, and it is also confirmed by wife, 1 million. Now we tax husband and wife, one, million, uh, one half of 1 million. So this is 500,000, 500,000. If only husband A, conjugal property, signed by husband. So how do we tax that? Husband, 1 million, wife, 0. Husband, exclusive property, 1 million pesos. Then husband, wife, 1 million, wife, 0. Sir, why, uh, why is it the rule only applies to the husband? Because generally, uh, the law treats that it is the husband who makes all the rules or who decides for the family. So in case the husband donates and it is only the husband who signs for the donation, it is on the account of the husband. So how about if it is a donation from the wife? How do we treat it? If only it is the wife who donated, we treat it from common property, taxable one half. The exception provided by the law is only applicable if ever that particular donation is only from the husband and no sign and no sign from your wife but if that is the case if we go to your civil code if only one of the uh spouses signs it if only one of the spouses signs it the effect is that it can be considered voidable for lack of consent of one spouse because again we consider it as a common property. So again, as a rule, if there is a donation from husband and wife, it is from a common property subject to one half. So if the donation is one million, one half, one half. But if only the husband signed, it is taxable only on the account of the husband. And if ever it is an exclusive property, then only to the particular spouse who made that particular donation. So for example, Husband donated to A, exclusive property only, the donation subject to husband. If wife uh, donated to A, exclusive property only, the wife should be subjected to your donor's tax. That is the rule for your conjugal donation. Remember these rules because you will encounter problems that uh, it is donated from husband and wife. So do not forget to look whether that is a conjugal or exclusive property. So exclusive property only to the particular spouse who donated it, conjugal property to both spouses, one half, one half. So in this case, so for the exclusive property, exclusive property, how do we tax it? So we have here husband, gross gift, husband, wife, one million zero, less the 250,000. So we have here 750,000 multiplied by 6%. That's how we will tax it. If that is a common property, husband and wife, so 500,000, 500,000, so less 250, less 250, so we have 250,000 taxable multiplied by 6%. So both of them should pay. So in common, as you can see, we have both husband and wife who will file or pay don donor's tax while in your exclusive, it is only the husband who pays the donor stocks, assuming it is the husband who made the donation. Okay, so again, inclusions, we again follow the rules. If ever that is a resident or citizen, global. If that is NRA, you look whether it is with reciprocity or without reciprocity as to your Philippine properties, which is subject to donation. Next. We have your transfer for insufficient consideration. This except your real property considered as capital asset. So this is equal to your fair market value less the amount of consideration. And for conjugal donations, always remember what items 
to be included on your conjugal donations, whether we should tax both husband and wife or we will only tax one particular spouse. Furthermore, by the way, if ever that is a donation on a common law spouses, what is a common law spouse? Those uh, spouses which uh, are already living as husband and wife. However, however, the, they are not legally married. So if ever there is a donation between them, even if common law spouses, they are considered void donations. Further donation of a particular husband to uh, his or her to his concubine that is not considered a valid donation that is a void donation under the law. Uh, those are your inclusions. So just remember the rule here in your inclusion. So we're done with valuation. What is the rule that you need to take note based on fair market value inclusion? You just need to know these rules. Resident or citizen and NRA, the same rule. Transfer for insufficient consideration, except real property considered as capital asset. That is fair market value less consideration. Conjugal, you need to know what particular uh, spouse uh, made the donation so that we know what should be included on your gross gifts. So we're done with your inclusions and your valuations. We go now to your exclusions. So what are your exclusions on your gross gifts? So first exclusions on your gross gift that we will discuss is your cancellation of indebtedness. So what is this cancellation of indebtedness? So there is a debt of one person and it is canceled by the creditor. So here we have a creditor and we have a debtor and the debtor has a liability. So the creditor cancels the donation uh, the creditor cancels now the indebtedness of the debtor. So how do we treat that? For cancellation of indebtedness, do not treat this one as a particular donation. Why? Because if that cancellation of indebtedness, you look first whether that cancellation is due to a performance of a service or it is a cancellation of debt without a consideration. So generally, you can sell a debt or an indebtedness of the debtor if in case there is a performance of that debtor to the creditor. So for example, uh, the debtor has a liability of 50000 to the creditor. And now the creditor tells the debtor that you will not pay me the 50000 in case you will work on my farm for two months. Now the debtor worked on the farm for two months, therefore the debt now is cancelled. There is now a performance of service from the debtor. If there is a performance of service, this is not subject to donor tax, but subject to income tax. Why? Because we, we look at the cancellation as a payment of the service. Since it is a payment of a service, it is subject to income tax, not a gratuity. But if the cancellation of indebtedness is without a consideration or without a performance of a service, this is subject to donor tax. So what is excluded as your cancellation of indebtedness? Only when there is a performance of a service. But if that cancellation of indebtedness is without consideration or without performance of a particular service, then it is subject to donor tax. Remember the rule here. Because normally, what they say is if there is a cancellation of indebtedness, we should exclude it as part of your gross gift. No, it depends whether there is a particular uh, factor as to your cancellation of indebtedness. And what is that particular factor? That is the performance or the consideration because uh, that is a consideration or performance that made the cancellation of that indebtedness. So remember this rule on your cancellation of indebtedness. If there is a performance of service to cancel the indebtedness, subject to income tax, not subject to donor tax. Therefore, exclude. But if it is without consideration or performance, it is subject to donor tax, you include. Next, we have your renunciation of inheritance or compromises on will disputes. So what is a renunciation of inheritance? So when you say renunciation of inheritance, you are an heir. So if you are an heir and you receive a property out of the estate, 
that particular property will be given to you after the settlement of the state. But what if you don't like those properties given to you, so you will renounce them? Meaning, you will not take already that property, but you will give it to the other heirs, so you renounce it. For renunciation, generally, that can either be your general renunciation or specific renunciation, but we will not tackle that. What we need to learn is there is a renunciation, meaning there is a rejection of that part particular share on the estate or what we call as your inheritance. Another is your compromises on will disputes. This is again uh, just like your renunciation. It is as if a rejection as to the amount of your will so that there will no longer be a dispute on the will. So for example, there is a will and the heirs are A, B, and C. And they are fighting as to a particular share. So sabi na lang ni A, ah, okay, sige, wag na lang sa inyo na lang yan. So it is a compromise on the dispute on the will, but it is like a renunciation of inheritance. Therefore, it really comes together. So renunciation of inheritance or compromise on will disputes is considered an exclusion on gross gifts. But why is it considered as an exclusion on your gross gift? It is considered as an exclusion on your gross gift because here there is already a rejection of the share on your inheritance, but you cannot be a donor. Why can you be why can't you be considered as the donor? You cannot be considered as the donor because again, in your estate, if there is an estate here, you must first transfer it to the heir. Now there is not there is nothing yet transfer to the heir, but the heir already renounced. The heir already renounced the share. In short, the heir did not become the owner or did not become the owner of that particular property. Therefore, the heir is not considered the donor here. There is no donation to speak of. So the property renounced by an heir is not considered a property of the heir because not yet the owner, uh, not yet the owner. Therefore, there's no donor. Then what happens? Since the estate did not transfer to the heir, or the property of the estate does not transfer to the heir, it will remain to the estate. Therefore, it will transfer to the other heirs. Since it will go back to the estate and will transfer to the other heirs, it is now subject to estate tax, not donor's tax. We go back. Why is it considered not item of gross gifts? Because we said the estate should distribute the property to the heir. But the heir, without having yet the control of their, over the property, renounced it. In short, the heir never became the owner. The heir never became the owner. So, since the heir renounced it, the property will go back to the estate and it will be distributed to other heirs. Since now, it will be transferred from estate to other heirs, what we look now is the transfer from the dissident to the other heirs subject to estate tax. Subject to estate tax. So, not subject to donor's tax, but subject to estate tax. Because, as we said, it did not become the property of the heir, but it is now, again, the property of the estate transferring to other heirs. Next, we have your beneficiaries of trust. So here in your beneficiaries of trust, we have your beneficiary and we have your trustor and we have your trustee. So generally in your trust, what happens is your trustor will give or will let the trustee hold the property. And when the time comes, the trustee should transfer it to the beneficiary. So here, the transfer of your trustee to the beneficiary is not considered a donation. Why? Because the trustee is not considered as your owner of the property. It is only considered as a passing property subject to your specific power of appointment. So in short, it is trustor to beneficiary, not trustee to beneficiary. So if there is a transfer to your beneficiaries of trust because of your trustee to beneficiary, it is not considered a donation because it is only a specific power of appointment. What is subject to donation here is the trustor to beneficiary, not the trustee to beneficiary.
clear, trustee to beneficiary, not subject to donation. So you should exclude them on your gross gifts. Lastly, your exempt donations. If you still remember your exempt, uh, exempt items on your estate, it's almost the same here in your exempt donations in your uh, donor stocks. So what are your exempt donations? Again, your donations to the national government, donations to your nonprofit organizations subject to the 30% rule and subject to the non-admin purpose rule. Further, we have your donations from your special laws. This is uh, quite, quite many, I should say, because uh, I don't know what number of items are considered as your uh, exemption for your special law, but some are examples are your uh, donation to your International Rice Research Institute, IBP, uh, what else? Donation to Ramon Magsaysay. So those are the items I know based on your special law. So it is quite exhaustive, but please try your best to read those exempt donations based on your special law. So it is normally enumerated as items exempted for donations based on special law. So those are excluded on your gross gifts. Okay? So valuation, fair market value, inclusion, same rule in your SD tax as to your resident and citizen and NRA. Also, we have your uh, transfer for insufficient consideration and conjugal donation. For exclusions, we have your cancellation of indebtedness. Take note of the rule on your whether there is a performance of a service or without a performance of a service. And then we have your renunciation or compromises on will disputes. This is considered an explicit exclusion. The transfer of your uh, property from your trustee to beneficiary is considered an exclusion because it is only a passing property. And your exempt donations under the tax code and special laws, such as your donation to your government, donation to your nonprofit organizations, or donation to some organizations under the special law that is subject to, uh, not subject to donor stocks. So please take a look as to these items under your special law. So we're done with your inclusions, your exclusions, and valuations. We go now to your deductions. So what are your deductions? from your gross gifts. So the following are your deductions from gross gifts. So the first is your diminution of gift. So what is a diminution of gift? This diminution of gift refers to the decrease on the value of your gross gift caused by the donor. So it is caused by the donor. Generally, how is this diminution of gift caused by the donor? It is caused by the donor by uh, decreasing the property by making a condition out of the donation. So for example, A donated a property to B with a condition that B should donate the 30% to a non-profit organization. So this 30% is considered the diminution of gift. Okay, so example, where is there a diminution of gift if there is a condition made by the donor which decreases the gross gift? So, for example, A to B condition that uh, the B should give 30% of the property to NPO. The 30% condition here is considered diminution of gift. So, it will decrease your gross gift. Next, we have your incumbrance assumed by the donor. So this is a liability attached to the liability attached to the gift assumed by the donor. So liability attached to the gift assumed by the donor. So A transferred a property, so real property of 1 million to B. 1 million is the fair market value. And there is an existing existing mortgage amounting to 100,000, which is assumed by B. So how much is the amount of your net gift? So 1 million less 100,000, your net gift will be 900,000 pesos. So the 100,000, if ever assumed by the doni, is considered a deduction from cost gift. Next, we have your destroyed donation. So when can we say that the donation is destroyed or lost? So remember, 
a property is considered lost if it is uh, it already perish or it is lost due to fortuitous event based on your obligations and contracts. So if that is a destroyed donation, generally, when should it be destroyed? So we have your completion and we have your perfection. And then it must be done before this date. So it must be lost or uh, destroyed before this date. After that, it is subject to donor tax. So again, for your uh, destroyed donations, for the lost property, it must be caused by your fortuitous event before delivery or acceptance is made. So before the completion or perfection, if the loss is made during this time, it is not subject to donor stops. But if the loss is made after perfection, it is subject to donor stops. That's the rule. Okay? Destroyed donation, when we talk about destroyed, it is considered a loss donation. So deductions from ghost gifts, what are those? Diminution of gift in case there is a condition attached by the donor which decreases now your gross gift. Encumbrance assumed by the donee. If there is a liability attached to the gift which is now assumed by the donee. Destroyed donation. If there is a loss donation due to fortuitous event made during or before perfection or completion of that particular donation. But if it is destroyed after the perfection, it is subject to donor tax. So we're done with your valuation, fair market value. We're done with your inclusions. So the rules here, the resident or citizen, NRA, we have your transfer for insufficient consideration, except here your real property subject, uh, real property considered as capital asset. And lastly, for your conjugal donations. We have your certain exclusions. So what are your exclusions? We have your rule on your cancellation of indebtedness only if there is a performance made. If there is no performance, it is subject to donor tax. No performance subject to donor tax. Another, we have your renunciation of your inheritance or your compromises on will disputes. And then lastly, we have your exempt donations. Now, we also talk about your deductions. So what are your different deductions? Your diminution, your encumbrance, and your destroyed donations. Since you already have a knowledge on your valuation, inclusion, exclusions, and deduction, we are now ready for your donor's taxation. So how do we tax a particular donation? So your donor's taxation, as we said a while back, is a proportional tax and also a it is also an annual tax so if it's annual tax we said it is based on cumulative basis and subject to proportional tax so how do we compute it gross gifts less exemptions or deductions net taxable gifts less the 250000 this is provided under your train law multiplied by your donor's tax rate of 6% this is your donor's tax due less your tax credit Depending whether it is one foreign country, we have your proportion, if you still remember it. If it is two foreign countries, we have two limits. The first limit is your proportion, and the second limit is your total proportion. So when your proportion, we have your foreign country one divided by your total gross gifts. You know? If it is total proportion, total foreign country over total gross gifts. How do we file your donor stocks? We file it through BIR form 1800. It is due 30 days after the donation was made. However, uh, if ever, it can also be extended up to six months depending whether there is a approval from your regional district officer or by your CIR or commissioner for internal revenue. So that's it for your donor's taxation.